Welcome everyone to the Learning Tube. This is Ava and we are here for another exciting session. How is everyone doing today? Hope you're all having a fantastic day, evening, night, morning, depending on where you are from. Now, here you should see the Learning Tube Facebook page or Facebook group. If you're not in the group, be sure to join. Dadrian, can you drop that link in the chat? And the group is as active as you make it. So remember, post in the group anything you want to share with us, anything you want us to celebrate, any questions that you have. The group is there for you. If you're not a part of the Learning Tube Facebook group, be sure to join the group. All right? Be sure to join the group. Now, what are extensions? Now, when you're referring to extensions with the Google Chrome browser, remember, a browser allows you to view web pages. It gives the browser more functionality, as in allows the browser to be able to do more. And today we're going to be looking on some AI-powered ones that are available with Google Chrome. Now, first, you have to know where do you find these extensions? They don't come with the web browser when you install it. You have to put the extensions that you want for your particular needs. So first, you'd head on over to Chrome Web Store. You can just search for Chrome Web Store or if you know the exact link, link you can go there. So I'm going to come here, Chrome Web Store, and I'm going to share the link here for you so that you can check it out. So it has a lot of goodies in there for you to check through based on what you're looking for. You can search for extensions and themes. Here you can just click on the extensions area and it will show you a variety of extensions based on certain categories. So here we see communication, developer tools, education tools, workflow and planning. So all of that fall under productivity. Here we have lifestyle and here we have make room year. So we have a variety here for you to go through and decide what you want. But I've picked out some that I want to discuss with you today. So if you're just going to search through, you can just click on the different ones. And here, these are some communication extensions, Quillbot. For those who do writing, here we have email tracker, something here called mail tracker, some different ones, SMS, so on. And then, as I said, you have different ones if you want things for entertainment. So don't think that extensions are just for work and productivity. You can have fun with your extensions as well to just make your Google Chrome browser different from everyone else's and be able to do some cool things. So don't think it's all work and no play when it comes to Google Chrome extensions. Now, if you know the particular name of your extension, you can search here in the search extensions and theme area and find the particular one that you want to look at. Now, the first one that we're going to be looking on is actually called ChatGPT for Google. Now, we all know ChatGPT. If you don't, ChatGPT is an AI tool that allows you to do so many things by entering what we call prompts that are input data telling the AI tool what you want it to do, or you can also upload varying types of material and ask it to analyze and give you in the, uh, give you output based on the input that you've given it. So if you don't have a chat GPT account, let me just go over here and show you the link for that. So you're gonna go to chat.openai.com and sign up for an account if you don't have one. So if you're going to need it, use some of these features of some of these extensions. All right. So just drop in that for those who don't. Let me know who has a chat GPT account here. Give me a one. Chat GPT who has a chat GPT account. I should see a whole lot of ones going through because once you're a part of the Learning Tube family, you will know how important chat GPT is for all aspects of your life, not only work entertainment, all sorts of stuff. And of course, yes, you have the subscription. So the one will include both, either the paid or the free, but you at least have an account. That's the most important thing to have an account with ChatGPT. All right, so I'm very happy to see all the ones coming through. And if you don't, definitely don't let today pass you by without installing that, or I should say signing up for an account. All right, so the first one we're looking at is ChatGPT for Google. So as I said, if you know the name of the extension, you can go here and search for it, but I have it right here. And I'm gonna share the link 
in the chat for you so that you can just go directly to get it. So chat GPT or Google, all right? We're gonna share these links with you, so don't worry. So chat GPT for Google, as it says, self-explanatory, it basically adds to your regular Google searches that you're doing. So you would have your regular search results and search results that chat GPT for Google is displaying for you as well, which may give you a bit more detail or to the point based on what you're doing. So some may say, then why don't I just search in chat GPT instead of using chat GPT for Google? You have a dual thing going on. So you still can see Google's results and you can still be able to see what chat GPT would give you for those particular search. So somebody tell me something to search for in Google. Tell me something random. What can I search for? Anything, doesn't matter. Well, PG, PG, something PG. What can I search for in Google? And I want to show you the difference with it having the extension and not having the extension on, all right? All right, so a lot of stuff, Dallas traffic, salary for project managers, all right? All right, so let's, let's try and see what comes up for salaries for project managers. When I click on this, it's gonna be showing me salaries for different stuff that is, it, it's picking up Jamaica for me because that's where I'm stationed now. So it's showing me based on where I am, but it's showing these results right here. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like when I'm searching with the chat GPT for Google extension enabled. But before I do that, I want to show you that. How do you actually add an extension to your Google Chrome browser? So let me go back to the Chrome store and show you. So let's say I'm interested in using this one here, best cursors, I want to install this. What happens is that when you click on the browser, it's gonna show you a button that says add to Chrome. When you click on this, it's gonna tell you a little about what's going on, read and change all your data for websites. Basically it's incorporating itself within the browser and it's telling you what it can do. And then if you're okay with all of that, well, if you're not okay, then you would cancel and of course not have the use of the, of the extension. But once you're okay with it, you add extension and then it will let you know that the extension has been installed. Now, some extensions require you to do a sign up and may take you to another page and it wants you to sign up with your Google email address, but some of them don't ask that. So if it doesn't ask for any signups, you leave it alone. So here it takes us to another page. Not sure if this wants a sign up, but you would look through and find whatever is asking you to sign up, etc. All right, so let's close this and I'll go back here. And here now, once it's installed, it will tell you now, remove from Chrome. So if you come back and search for that same extension, you'll see it say remove from Chrome and not in, add to Chrome like we saw. If you don't want it to be on Chrome and you're looking on it through the web store, you can simply say remove from Chrome, remove and it will remove it from your web browser. I'm gonna show you another way how you can remove it. And remove from Chrome means you're taking it off of your computer com completely. It's not a part of your web browser anymore. So as you see here, I've already installed ChatGPT for Google, but here you're gonna notice that it says this item is inactive. The reason it's inactive is that I wanted to show you what it looks like when you do a search without the extension enabled, because you can enable and disable an extension as you see fit. For instance, if you don't want the extension to be in use, you would, you would disable it. If you want to use it, you would enable it. And of course, remove means take it off your computer completely. So to enable, disable your extensions, you simply click the three dots here. This should look familiar from last week. And then you go down to extensions and then manage extensions. Here you'll see all of your extensions that you have. You can actually search for the extension that you want. So if you if you know the name of the extension, I know that these were chat GPT. So I'm just gonna go to chat GPT and you're gonna see it say chat GPT for Google. And here this button allows me to enable it. So I'll turn it on now and I can use it, it's in use. So let's go back to the search that we did. So it was salary for project managers. This is what it looked like when we searched when we didn't have the chat GPT for Google. So I'm gonna do the search again and show you the difference, All right? So what you see happen on the right-hand side, I have some additional information coming up for me. So here it says, 
the salary for project managers can vary depending on you see what's happening so it's actually giving me some types of manager levels and possible salary for them but notice that when i had my actual google search over here i'm not getting such specific answers but i'm having dual function going on here i can see what's going on on google if i want to click on something specific here i still have that option however i'm seeing what's going on that possible chat gpt answers that it's giving me on this side right here if i want to close it i can and just focus over here or i could just leave that there and it's not bothering me with anything so that's a great way to be able to see what's going on in google with the, the kind of results that it gives and still be able to have and see what chat gpt is given to you all right so if monica comes up that's just asking you to it wants you to do another google chrome extension so all you would do is just close out of it just read and understand what's going on and it will take you back to the page you are on you need to remember that when using the computer sometimes a lot of pop-ups may happen different things so just be conscious of what's going on with what popped up and look for the x or whatever close button and it will take you back to where you were as i said some of these extensions want you to sign in with your google gmail email that you usually use i'm using my regular one here so that's why i picked up in this search but if i did this in another google account it wouldn't show it because it's not linked to that particular extension so note that some of these want you to sign in and then you're able to continue using it as you see fit so that's google that's chat gpt for google very easy another search somewhere to put in public domain art so let's see what that comes up so i'm gonna type this in regular google search and then see what comes up so here we see it's showing us images open access images public domain images for artists and over here now you see it's giving us some telling us what public domain refers to here are some common types of public domain arts so as I said, you could do the same thing in ChatGPT. Don't get me wrong, instead of typing it up here, but I'm able to see what ChatGPT may give me as well as what Google is giving me as well. All right, so I just wanted to make sure that you are aware of that, okay? And you see, you have you can have a full page chat going on here and let's see what other features they have. So here we can copy the answer. We can ask for another answer. We can share it. We see we can use GPT-4 if we have that access. You'd have to put on whatever plan based on that, the extension itself. This is really the extension itself, all right? But here it's just giving you the regular. All right, so just came on. What's the name of this extension? It's called Chat GPT for Google. Chat GPT for Google. So that's very easy, very simple. Do you need to have it here? No. Is it nice to have a variety? Sure. So that's the first one that we have looked at. Any questions so far on that? I see some questions drop, but just check in to make sure you don't have any other questions. Before I move on to the other AI powered extension. So as I said, extensions really allow you to personalize your browser based on your needs and wants. So it's good to go through the store and explore it. Now, Monica, not sure specifically what it is, but when you read it, it will tell you what it's all about. It's just an additional extension that can do something else. So you can read it and see, I wasn't interested in it. So when it came up, I just closed it off. But you can search for it in the Chrome store and see what it says. So the next one we're gonna be looking at is Web Chat GPT. And this is an extension that I'm sure a lot of you may have heard of before. But the great thing about Web Chat GPT, it is still an extension that's useful. Now, if you've ever heard about this, what used to happen is that when ChatGPT first came about, it did not allow you to browse the internet. What happened is that it was only limited to the knowledge it was programmed with. It started out with, what was it? September, 2021, it was programmed up to then, then it went to 2022 and so on. So until ChatGPT 4 came about, what happened is that you weren't able to browse the internet and you were just stuck with whatever it was programmed up to. Now, when ChatGPT4 came about now, that one, that version, the subscription version of GPT browses the internet. So if you have ChatGPT4, this makes no difference for your experience. 
But with the free version of ChatGPT, you're going to see the difference, all right? So if there's somebody here that is not subscribed, this extension does allow you to have more functionality of ChatGPT and get more answers after you use it in a search, okay? So as Kim is saying, yes, what happens is that it pops up, yes, but it seemed to sneak up and try to act like ChatGPT1. Not sure about that. That didn't happen for me. But you have to make sure that anytime you have a pop-up, just be aware of what's on your screen and close it off accordingly, all right? Using the internet, internet is filled with different pop-ups. You do have extensions that can prevent pop-ups, but some of them don't prevent all or certain type of pop-ups. So we're going to be looking on web chat GPT. So I have it right here. So let me copy and give it to you here. This one is web chat GPT, web GPT. Usually I think it's one word, so let me do it as one word. So for each one that I'm sharing with you, when you click on the link, it's going to tell you about the extension. It's going to tell you the rating that it has. It gives you an overview of the extension. So see, it says that it augments your chat GPT prompts with relevant web search capabilities for web browsing. Can it be used on your phone? Not necessarily the phone itself. If you're using the web browser, the desktop version of the web browser on your phone, yes, you would have functionality there because using the desktop version of the web browser is like using your computer itself. But without that, no. So here we have the definition for each. So each one tells you an overview rating and such, what people's experience was. So you can use that to judge if it's an extension that you want to use when you do your own search. So I'm going to enable, well, I'm not going to enable it yet. I'm going to head on over to chat GPT. I have the subscriptions. I'm going to change my from GPT 4 to GPT 3.5. Just doing a quick reload to make sure that everything is registering. All right. So notice it looks regular, right? Yes. So I'm just going to type and say, okay, let me use, I did this in one of our paid programs today. So let me ask chat GPT, tell me about Gamma. Gamma is a presentation creation tool. All right, so here you see it's talking about Gamma for some math things. So let me be more specific. It's telling me about some math things. So tell me about Gamma presentation tool. You see, it says as my last update, January 2022, January 2022, there isn't a specific presentation tool known as Gamma that I'm aware of. So if Gamma is a new tool, I recommend checking online. So it doesn't know about Gamma, nothing about it, all right? So this is the free chat GPT. However, I'm going to install, I should say enable my extension. I've installed them already. So I'm gonna enable my chat GPT, okay? And I'm gonna go back to chat GPT right here. Is that it? No, okay? And I'm going to do a reload. I have to reload the page. Notice now that there are some options here now that come up. So I have the option for web access. And that's what you're going to turn on and off, depending on what you want. Once you want your free version of ChatGPT to search the web as well to give you results, you have to turn on the web access. All right. If you don't, then you would leave it off. As I said, you don't need this for the subscribe the subscription version of chat gpt because it already searches the web okay so i'm going to turn it on and ask it the same thing tell me about my presentation tool let me just move stuff out of the way all right so see it says understanding questions searching it says tell me about gamma gamma is an ai powered presentation tool that simplifies content creation by generating presentations, documents, and websites. It even gives us links to the actual application. Do you see the difference? So for anyone who has the free version of ChatGPT, you can benefit from having the Google Chrome extension Web ChatGPT because it allows you to now search the web and not be limited to what ChatGPT was programmed for. So as I said, subscribe, subscribe users, you don't need to have this. Would you see it as well if you put it on? Yes, you would, but of course you would leave off the web 
web access section if you don't want it to be doing that too because it already is supposed to be doing that in that version all right what do you think about that i think that's amazing because you still get a good amount of functionality with the free version of chat gpt because you have added this extension to give you more functionality with an existing tool so remember some of these extensions act independently or they just enhance other tools that you're using on your computer all right so debo yes you remember that extension yes we have looked at it before so just reminding people about it so heather says amazing nicole says great to know yes it's always great to have options until you subscribe to chat gpt itself you can still get adequate answers to get a push for what you want and of course remember with any ai generated content always check through and make it your own because remember it's searching the web itself and giving you back this data any kind of thing that you're getting all right so no we're just looking at chat gpt for this particular session all right in other programs we have talked about bard i think it's in i don't remember which program right now maybe ai experts or some other AI programs that we have, paid programs. All right, so that is what was, check, what was that again? Web chat GPT that allows you internet access. Remember, if you don't want to have the extension enabled, just reminding you where you go, there's also this shortcut right here. It shows you all your extensions that you have. And right here, you can actually pin the extensions that you want to have easy access to. So when you come here, it, anytime you see an, a color on this, it means it's pinned. I have easy access to it. If I want to unpin it, as in remove it from this tray, I would just click on it. So you can do that through that side as well. So let's click here. So here you can go and see each extension, the three dots. You can see more. You can remove it. Remember, removing it removes it from your computer fully. Manage the extension. It takes us back to the same area. But it shows us this particular extension and we can turn it on and off. Remember, turning it on and off doesn't take it off of your computer. Removing it, removing it deletes it fully. But this one is just showing me this specific extension. So if I wanted to remove it, I have the option here to do so and so on, this specific one. But if you want to see all of them, you click on these three dots on the top right and you go to extensions manage extensions and you have all of them here to toggle on and off to remove as you see fit all right let me check for any questions that are there all right let's see so what did you do to make it give that answer when i ask about gamma ai in chat gpt5 it says i don't know anything so kim i installed this extension that you see here, Web Chat GPT. And after I installed it, when I came back to Chat GPT, let me go back to GPT 5, sorry, 3.5. I have this option that's down here. So I have to turn on the web access button. So you can turn it on and off. When it's on, it's going to search the web as well to give you back answers. When it's off, it will still give you that answer of not knowing anything outside of um, January 2022. All right. Just checking through some of the questions. So yes, it's recorded, Jeff. And it will be sent via email as well as posted in the Facebook group. Did you drop the Facebook group link again for me? Anybody that's not in the group, you can join the group. We also have it on the Learning Tube YouTube channel as well. Adrian, can you drop that too? The Learning Tube YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos. <laughs> that's my YouTuber voice. All right, so Nicole, you're saying no. When I do a search, a web search, it now appears as a new chat on ChatGPT. How I prevent that from happening? Not sure why that is happening. I don't know if it's some additional settings in yours because you notice that when I did my search, when I did mine, it stayed. Oh, when you do a web search, web search as in Google search, is that what you're saying? When you do a regular google.com search, Oh, new chat on. Oh, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. No, no, no. That part, I didn't look and see for that. I know what you're talking about. I usually just remove them or just ignore them or, or so on. Yes, I know what you're talking about. I did notice that when I used to use that feature. All right. What about Notion? So Notion, 
is another application that allows you to do a lot of stuff. So is are you asking me if we have an extension for that or if we're going to be dis discussing that? We actually have a training on Notion. So you can check that out on the YouTube Learning Tube channel. All right. So check that out. That training was done. We had a special guest come in and talk all about Notion. So you can check that out for the, the Learning Tube YouTube channel. Okay, great. So I just want to make sure that I'm not missing any questions. So that's why I'm going through the chat and I see Deja and dropping the links. Thank you so much. So just checking to see. All right then. So that's the web chat GPT tool. As I said, we may have mentioned this before. But just letting you know it's still applicable when you're using the free version of ChatGPT. So it's always good to know about that. All right. So make a note of that. So the next one we're going to be looking on is another AI powered. Ready? Another AI powered extension. Let me know if you're ready. I don't know. You guys don't seem excited enough to, to be getting all of these goodies that will save you time and give you options. Are you ready? I don't, I don't feel like I'm ready. I feel like I'm just here talking to myself. Me more excited than you. <laughs> all right. So born ready. We're ready. Ready. All right. All right, Anne-Marie. I see you. I see you. I see you. Okay, good. I have to know that you're here with me. You know, so we're here doing presentations. We always, I know some people may say, oh, why do you keep on asking us for feedback? Because we, we, we are not in person. Now we need to know that you're awake and you're with us and you're excited to know everything that we're telling you. So Yes. Okay. I see a lot of you already. All right. So this one is called Chat GPT Writer. And this particular one is great when it comes to email, but specifically Gmail. And I know a lot of you, thank you, Janice. I know a lot of you have Gmail accounts. Yes. Give me a G. Where are the Gmail email account? Gmail email, Gmail email. So this will come in handy for all the Gmail email. All the Gmail email users, you're the ones I'm talking about. Gmail has taken over email. Most people have a Gmail email. And if you don't, it's easy to get one. So Gmail, G, 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 give me a G, G, give me an M, M, give me an M. You get the drift. All right. So we're going to look at chat GPT writer over here. As you see again, I can't make them active before I show you like what it's like with and what it's like without. So we're going to look at this one now. So remember, for those who were not here earlier, I showed how you get these in extensions. And I also showed how you can install them, remove them, as well as disable them. All right. So just checking to make sure that I did share the link for, I did share the link for, for WebChat GPT, right? I hope so. If not, these links are going to be included in the replay so this one is chat gpt writer all right so this one really helps you when it comes to email all right as i said some of these are going to require you to sign in so to sign in with it with google i suggest you sign in with the google that you use a lot the gmail that you use i have many gmail emails so I'm, I use this with a particular Gmail email. It's not that it transfers to all of your Gmail email, all right? So use it with the specific one that you want. So I'm going to show you what it looks like without it. So remember, I've disabled it so we can have a good demonstration. So here I am in my inbox. So hey, oh, Ava wrote me a message. Hey, Ava, okay. So Ava wrote me an email. Let's see what Ava has to say. So Ava says, hi, Ava. I real, I, I, I really see, Ava can't even spell. I really need your help using Google Suite. Okay, Ava. All I know is that it's free and that it can be used to create documents. Can you help me, please? Best regards, other Ava. Okay, so this is, <laughs> I'm just having a little fun, guys. So this is other Ava, okay? So other Ava has written me an email. So when I go to reply to other Ava, so I come here and let me just make that. I don't know if you can hear in the background. There's a helicopter passing. No, I'm not in the war zone. No, no. <laughs> All right. So here I am. And this is what I would have to do if I'm replying to the email. So I'm going to go through and 
I'm going to read and I'm going to decide what to do. And you know what will be the reply. But wouldn't it be great to have something that will allow us to be able to formulate a reply without us doing much, right? Okay. That's why we have chat GPT writer available. So I'm going to enable it. So I'm just going to do a reload. I've enabled it. Let me come out of this. So I'm going to come out of that. I don't want it to do a draft. So let's reply to other other. Some of you may notice that this was here already. Not sure why it was there, but it, it wouldn't have worked because I disabled it. Now this icon represents chat GPT writer. So you're going to look for this little icon when you open to reply to the email. So when you click on it, so it looks like a light, lightning bolt. And if you hover over it, it tells you what it is as well. So let me see what's happening, why it's not opening. Why aren't you opening chat GPT writer? All right, let me go through again. And let's come here. Let's go here. Let's go here. Let's go here. All right, sometimes, you know, because I disabled it, I have to just wake it up and say it's time to work. So yes, this extension is a time saver. We know that when it, when it comes when it comes to answering emails, you know what that's all about. All right. So, uh, Marcos, no, I'm not aware of that particular app. Not aware of it. You know, there's so many apps, right? So here it is showing the email. So it has the sender's email, the subject, the thread, all these things. What was written. So now you have the opportunity to tell them what you want to be put in the reply. So it says briefly enter what you want to reply. So just like, you know, you can put the include so-and-so, blah, 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 da, 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 all these different things here. It allows you to choose the tone that you want to reply in. No, but I just want to show you what it can do without me even putting in anything here. So let's say I haven't, I don't know what I want to say. I have no clue. I'm just clueless. Generate reply. So remember what it asked. Other other had asked about Google Suite. For those who don't know Google Suite, Google Suite is an online application tool that allows you to create docs, sheets, slides, forms, all those different things. So she's saying that she knows that it's free, but and she knows it can create document, but she doesn't know anything else. Now this is what ChatGPT writer told me or gave me as a response without me even, I don't put anything. It's just reading what's in the mail. So it says, hey, other, other. Yeah, hey, other, other, other. Other, 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 another, other, right? <laughs> no problem at all. I'd be happy to help you out with Google Suite. It's super handy once you get the hang of it. First, creating documents is just the tip of the iceberg with Google Suite. You can also whip up, remember, you know, it's a casual tone. You can also whip up spreadsheets, presentations, and even forms for surveys or quizzes. Start with the basics. Do you really do you already have a Google account set up? If not, we can get you, we can get that sorted out first. Looking forward to getting up and running smoothly. Best of all. Oh, I mean, it took us so long to write that email, right? I'm so tired from having to formulate that email for myself. Like, what? It wrote that without me telling it anything. What do you think about that? It wrote that without me even, even giving it any guidance. It knew what Google Suite was. It knew to say, okay, do you have a Google account? Because for those who don't know, you need to have a Gmail email account in order to be able to use Google Suite. And it did all of that without me telling it anything. Now, you would read through and decide what you want to do. So you decide, okay, am I using this? What am I doing with it? All these things. Notice that it's picking up ChatGPT 3.5. Remember, we could do this in ChatGPT, but this is really saving us a step. We don't have to go over to ChatGPT and put it in there. Can you? Yes, you can. You can. That's an option too. So can you write it in another language? I haven't tested that out, but you could put it in ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT to translate to the other language and then use it that way. So that's an option. So if you're okay with the response, you can go insert response and it drops it right there. So we know we remove this. We don't want the, or is it is it in the right subject line? Nope. So let's take that out. And then, hey, other, other, so on, so on, so finish. That's it. Was that easy? That seemed pretty easy enough, right? I think that was like too easy. Was it too easy? Let's go back. 
And let's say we wanted to give it some prompts and stuff. So let's tell it what to put. First, ask if she, if other, let's see, you've given it some prompts. If other has a Gmail, email address, let her know that it's easy to use and she will have. Let's see, let's, let me just move some stuff out of the way. Last, using it. There are many other applications available other than document creation. I just want to see what it does when we put in something. Let's change the tone. Let's do professional. All right, so let's see what it gives us. Just want to show you what it can give you with everything. All right. So let's see what it tells us here. So remember we told it formal, not formal, professional. So it says there, so it doesn't even refer to, this is the name that is on the signed up for that particular Gmail email address. So it's not even referring to the person based on other other. It's using her professional, her name that's attached to her Gmail. So thank you for reaching out regarding Google Suite. It's great to hear you're interested in exploring its capabilities beyond document cr creation. Before delving further, Elvin, I mean, Elvin, so professional. <laughs> Could you please confirm whether you have a Gmail email address? Having a Gmail account makes it a seamless, makes it seamless to access. You get the drift, right? So this was more formal. So depending on what you want, you can do what you need to, to get done. All right. So that's just simple with that particular extension. GPT, chat GPT writer. Let me know who's going to use this extension to write their emails with their Gmail account. <laughs> who's going to use it? So as I said, it depends on what Gmail you sign up with. When it prompts you to sign up to that extension, it is a Gmail account that you sign up to that extension with. That's the one it will be picking up, all right? And as I showed you, it's that little... Where am I? This little, remember, read through and decide if you want to use it. Insert. I take out the subject line. And of course, you know, you edit accordingly. It's not set in stone. This is the icon you're going to be looking for to, to do what you need to do. All right. So Julie said she checked and there's a Yahoo one too. Yeah. Great, great, great. I know most people are Gmail one users. So that's why I showed this one. But thank you, Julie, for letting the Yahoo people know that there's one. All right so that they can use it. You can even share it in the chat if you have that there or whatever you use. Thank you. All right, so a lot of people say that they will be using it and such. What tool can we use to ensure that Google, where am I? What tool can we use that Google does not pick up AI content? So your regular AI content detectors, content at, Content at scale is a popular one that you can use. You can just search for it, content at scale AI detector. And that's there. You have undetectable, so many out there. So many out there. I see a lot of persons say, what about this? What about that? There's so many different tools for the different applications. I'm just showing you some. I can show you all, but I'm sure they have one for it. I'm sure, I'm sure. All right? I'm sure they have. So we're going to look at the last one for today's session. Last one, last one. This one now is YouTube summary for ch with ChatGPT and Claude. It's known as GLASP as well. GLASP, GLASP. I have a list. So let me just stick with YouTube summary <laughs> with ChatGPT and Claude. But you see it right here. This is the name, all right? So I'm going to copy this here and put it right here. So this is for YouTube summary with chat GPT and Claude. Claude. Claude is another AI tool that you can give prompts to and get input, get input results for. All right. So for this one, I am I have disabled it. Yes. So I'm gonna come over here, do a reload. When you're launching a new product, right, so let me just turn off the sound for that. Now this is a YouTube video. So this is going to work with YouTube. I just it says YouTube summary. So this is a YouTube video with a TED Talk with our very own Alicia. I don't know how many of you saw this TED Talk, but Alicia did a TED Talk all about how to use AI to clone ourselves 
so we get more done. Don't know how many of you saw this TED Talk. If you didn't, get on over and watch Alicia's TED Talk. Alicia's TED Talk. Okay? And see how you can clone yourself and get more done. I mean, I would love to have 10 more of me. Oh my gosh. My gosh. I don't know. I would love to have 10 more of me. Who would like 10 more of yourself? <laughs> All right. So, okay, Judy. So we're going to look at this now. So looking on it, it's a 17 minute video. Sometimes we don't have the time to be read, watching through an entire video. We have our videos. We have different length videos. So we want to know what the content of the video is. So that's where this particular extension comes in handy and it gives us a transcript and summary of the video. Are you able to get transcripts from YouTube videos? Yes, most YouTube videos allow you a transcript feature. They used to have it right here in the three dots, but when you click on more and in the description area and you come here, it shows you the transcript for the video. So you see it here with all the timestamps on it and such. You can actually toggle off the timestamps by clicking on this three dots here and toggle. So you can toggle them off or you can put them back on. You decide who you want because you can actually copy this somewhere and use the transcript, okay? Uh, what about sign up? What are you saying, Anne-Marie? You're saying it asks you to sign up to Glass? Yes, you'd have to sign up. It, it is, that's why I said it's also called Glass. So you'd have to sign. So you would sign up with the Gmail that is linked to the YouTube that you use. For instance, I have several Gmail accounts, but I don't use the YouTube. I don't sign into YouTube with those. I sign in with a main one. So that's the one I use to be able to pick up this extension. So yes, you have to sign up. You have to sign up. It's glass, but it's called, okay? I had mentioned that earlier. Okay, good. All right, so that's what it looks like without it. You know, we want to have a transcript. We want to be able to summarize or get some bullet points of what's going on in the video. So let me turn on this one. So enable. I'm going to come back to the same YouTube video. So I'm going to do a reload and look what's happening over here. Here we have a transcript and summary section come up. It wasn't there before, but now it's there, right? So this is what the extension adds so that we are able to do that. All right. Uh, Okay, I'll, I'll, yes, yes, Gregory, I'll go through the extensions again. I'll just remind you of which ones we looked at so far. And I share the links for each one, you know, so I can ask Adrian to just go through and copy back the links for me in the chat. Somebody's asking to see them again, all right? So, yeah, you can just put them together and drop it for me, please, Adrian. Okay, so let's look and see what it gives us. So transcript and summary, so click it. It shows us the transcript. Notice how more, much how more detailed this transcript is other than the one that YouTube actually gave us. Very detailed. Accuracy with all transcripts, you want to make sure that you check through to see that it's saying what it should. It's machine generated, so it may not be perfect, but trust me, some of them, depending on how clear the speaker is, you do get a good transcript from it, all right? So... But that's not what we want. We don't want this transcript. We want a summary of it because we don't, it's a lot to read through. So what this shows, you know, is that it, it gives you the chat GPT icon to take you into chat GPT. So remember I told you at the beginning that to utilize most of these extensions, you would need to have chat GPT. It's going to take you into chat GPT and then it's going to do its magic. See, it just, it, I'm not, I didn't do anything. It just took me here. It says, summarize the following in five bullet points. And it's showing all of the transcripts. And it did it for me. So it says, Alisa discusses the transformative potential of AI and AI cloning in her TEDx, TEDx, TEDx Rockville talk. She shares her personal experience of battling ovarian cancer, which led her to reevaluate how she spends her time. Little explains... I mean, isn't this like you just look through this and you get the gist of everything that she did? Suppose you were on the go, on the move. You didn't have the time to go through and say, oh my gosh, what is this all about? Of course, this is just her TEDx talk, but just picture something that you're trying to learn and learn quickly. All right. Uh, no, I don't have on anything. Please turn off something. Can't understand anything. Jeff, I'm not sure. There was a motorcycle that was passing in the background. So I don't know if that's what you heard. Not sure. I don't have on anything. All right. So 
yeah don't you think it's good to have a summary something that can just summarize give you some quick bullet points as to what you need without having to spend any time on it right it is so amazing that all of these tools are here to share all right um jeff that's not on my end don't know where that is not sure to be talking it's a zoo all right not not sure where you're hearing that all right so that's what we have with that particular chat gpt that it allowed you to summarize a youtube video if you're a youtube watcher like myself this is definitely something that you <laughs> would definitely benefit from using uh jeff i'm not sure what you're hearing i have no sound like that on my end others are not hearing it i'm not sure what may be playing in the background with me as well on your personal computer so the good thing is that the replay will be available and you can watch it without that interference with the noise all right so sorry about that but it's not on my end is there a subscription fee we know that with all extensions or certain things there may be upgrades but that allows me to do what i did for free that was all for free can you do a summary like this for Zoom recordings? You could do the same by uploading the Zoom recording into ChatGPT in parts, but not using that particular extension the way I used it. Not that particular extension, Alita, not that extension. All right, repeat how to use it. So what I did when I installed it, I, let, me, let me open back my YouTube video tab. So here I have my YouTube video and it brings up another option right here that allows me to do YouTube transcript and summary. So let me just let the ad come off. And what that does now, when I click on that, it's going to show me a transcript of the video. I'm just making it come off so that I have the actual video in case it picks up something else. So I click this button and it's going to show me all of what the transcript is, but I don't want the transcript. I want to head on over to ChatGPT to get the AI summary. So I click on this ChatGPT icon right here on the top and it takes me straight into ChatGPT and it gives me a summary at the bottom in bullet points. That's what it did. All right, so just checking through to see if I missed any questions. So as I said, there are so many extensions that are out there that can make your browsing experience more efficient and such. These are just a few that I introduced to you. Go into the Chrome store, Chrome Web store, check out what's there, see what's available, see what you're able to use, all right? So yes, Julie, I feel that like that's what's happening. Maybe something is playing in the background on his end. All right, so it allows you to do it for seven day trial, so on, so or at least also, as you know, sometimes we have to invest in certain things that are gonna make our life easier. So if it's something that you like, you can, Look at it further. All right. Okay, Nicole, very good, very good, very good, very good. So Ryan, big time savers. You're gonna try it now, yes, test it out and see. All right, <laughs> and Maria, you, you already have replied to three emails, wow. <laughs> what you said, it made it much easier for you to come up with an answer, right? And remember, we could have done the same by copying that email into ChatGPT and asking ChatGPT to come up with a response for it. So just let you know that that's an option, but to just have it right there in the Gmail itself, you know, just one extra step skipped does save time. So you're very welcome. So thank you, Deidre, for dropping those links again. Well, let me just do a quick recap of the extensions that we used. So the first one that we looked at was ChatGPT for Google. We dropped the link in the chat. This allowed you to just have another version of search results showing on the right hand side of your screen so what it did it may have specific results that you are looking for but you still have the option to see what google showed you as well so that's the purpose of that one for web chat gpt we looked at the extension for that Adrian just dropped the link earlier for chat gpt for google for web chat gpt with this one if you have the paid version for chat gpt it allows you to be able to search and get more information by linking your chat GPT to the web. You may be saying, but I have the subscription version, so I don't need this. No, this wouldn't be for you. It would be if you have the free version of chat GPT. So if you, do, if you don't have it and you search for something that was in chat GPT's data bank that's 
not there, then you wouldn't be getting the results that you want. But if you use this turn on the button, just like what we showed earlier, toggle it on, it will show you more recent data. Uh, let's see, does the chat GPT writer show on Gmail as quick reply? It actually shows, let me go back here. This is what it looks like. So if you hover on it, it will tell you that it's chat GPT writer. So I'm not sure which one you're seeing, Heather. So this is what it looks like, a lightning bolt. And when you hover on it, it tells you that it's chat GPT writer. Okay. And then we looked at chat GPT writer. This is the icon for it. And it allows you to be able to compose emails faster, usually linked to your Gmail email account. As said earlier, some of these extensions will require you to sign up with them. So make sure that you're signing up with a Gmail that that's the main Gmail that you're using when you're doing your emails that you're sending or the Gmail that you use for different things. Don't use a Gmail that you're not using and you're not going to get the functionality that way. And the last one we looked at was YouTube Summer with ChatGPT and Claude. This one allowed you to summarize a YouTube video as well as get a transcript. It's also called Glass. I can't say it properly because I have a lisp. So the S is giving me a problem. So Glass, and it will ask you to sign up with it too and make sure that you're using the Gmail that you use with your YouTube. For those who don't know, everybody has access to sign into a YouTube and create a YouTube channel and such but you do so with a Gmail email account. So you want to make sure that you're using the Gmail that you usually use when you, when you log in to YouTube, all right? So thank you for the kind words people were saying about you know being helpful and things like that. Um, what's the name of the YouTube extension again? So I told you a while ago, GLASP, G-L-A-S-P, but YouTube summary for chat GPT. How did I, let's see, how did you make use of the, where is that? The chat's moving a lot, so I'm trying to get it back. How did you make use of the chat GPT, of the chat GPT summary? How did I make use of it? Um, hmm. So I did the summary in order to just be able to get a good grasp of what was discussed in that particular session. So instead of me reading through all this transcript and watching a long video, it gave me this automatically when I use this button to head on over to ChatGPT. And it just, it gave the prompt to give me a summary and put five points. So I'm not sure if that's what you are asking. All right, so just checking to make sure. All right, so Nicole, so Nicole, found that there's a chat GPT bulk delete extension. Yay. So Nicole, you can drop that link for it in the, in the chat as well. If you want to share it with us. <laughs> so great, great job on, on searching and finding something that fixed the problem that you had. Uh, you're welcome, Tina. So thanks, Adrian, for dropping all those links. So as I said, these will be included in the replay. I'll, I'll include Nicole's link as well. This is the bonus one from Nicole. Thank you so much. And she's letting us know that there's a chat GPT bulk delete of the content that you want to delete. So you can check that out. It says the Chrome extension to delete bulk delete chat GPT conversation. So let me show you what that's about. So over here, all of these are chat GPT conversations that are saved. Now, usually when you want to delete it, you'd have to come here and do them one by one. So that particular extension, you know, see what I'm doing? One by one. So I guess that particular extension that she's found for us deletes them. Where did it go? It has a bulk delete option. So it says this Chrome extension is designed to help users delete conversations in ChatGPT's left side bar quickly and efficiently with the extension installed you can get checkboxes and can delete them all at once. All right, so thank you so much for that, Nicole. That's what we like to instill in this community that sharing is caring. <laughs> I'm kidding, but you know, we're all a team and we share with each other. We share our knowledge and you share what you know as well. So thank you for that, Nicole. I will include that in there. All right, so we include the links Olive, so don't worry. We will include the links in the replay. All right. We'll include these particular links for this session in the replay. 
So Nicole is giving us an additional note. Make sure the chat boxes are in front of the chat. Then begin checking the boxes and go to the red book delete button and you will see the chats disappearing. All right. So thank you so much for that. Thank you for joining me live on this session. And we will catch you on another session. I see Ju Judy asking one last question we're getting from you. Judy, if you are sending and answering emails using ChatGPT Writer, will the content of your emails go to there? In other words, if you're discussing something that's confidential, will it show up later in the answers to other people's inquiries? So you're asking if ChatGPT is saving your content that you're doing. It, since it's giving the answer from ChatGPT, it's actually running through the AI itself, as opposed to if it's saving it or not. Remember that if you're doing anything confidential and you don't want to run through a third party, it's best to just answer on your own to be on the safe side. So I would not suggest answering anything confidential through any particular software. That's the only way you can know for sure, sure, that everything is okay. It just being on the internet alone is a risk. So even sharing anything confidential on the internet alone is a risk. But to be on the safe side, don't do it through a third party. All right? Great, guys. Welcome. The replay will be available via email as well as posted in the Facebook group and on the Learning Tube YouTube channel. All right? Thanks, guys. Bye.